Nintendo has made some of the most respected gaming products ever created. But for a long time, the Wii U was the black sheep. We know now, of course, that it's a fantastic machine, but for its entire lifespan, it was constantly ridiculed for being underpowered, which made me curious. How powerful is the Wii U? Well, some say it's more powerful than a 360, some say less. So I wanted to correct the facts. Because the reality is the Wii U is powerful. It just has some limitations. And it is those limitations, as well as the console's strengths, that we will examine tonight. So sit back, relax, get yourself a cup of tea, or a beer if that's more your thing, and come along for the ride. PowerPC has had a strange history. Once the cornerstone of Apple's computer plan, the processors were behind some of Apple's greatest Macs. We are delivering today the world's fastest personal computer, and we're calling it the G5. But PowerPC chips have also found their way into a variety of other expensive machines. The $95 million F-35 fighter jet's vehicle management computer is powered by none other than a PowerPC chip. The Mars rover Curiosity is powered by a radiation-hardened PowerPC 750, a chip close in performance to that of a PowerMac G3. These days, things have changed, and even Apple has long made the switch to Intel. But IBM remained hard at work on developing the power architecture, and by 2010 their Power 7 chips were close to a Haswell i7 in single core performance, and were significantly more powerful than an i7 when using the entire chip. And it was 90 clusters of these Power 7 chips that allowed IBM to create Watson, an incredibly smart AI that could access masses of information and formulate it into human responses in seconds. Built to help doctors solve medical mysteries, Watson was also used to kick ass at Jeopardy. Watson went on a tear. Watson. Who is Franz Liszt? You are right. What is violin? Good. Who is the church lady? Yes. <laughs> Watson. What is narcolepsy? You are right, and with that, you move to $36,681. So to give you some context, all of this was happening a year or two before the launch of the Wii U. So naturally, I was excited when Nintendo announced that their new console would be using a next generation IBM power processor. This was gonna be it. A Nintendo console with a CPU that could run toe to toe with an i7. It would leave the other consoles in the dust. Supercomputer. AI level power in your Nintendo. Pokemon that could realistically react to anything you say. Smash battles with 64 people on screen. Virtual reality Legend of Zelda. But the Wii U couldn't cost $10,000. Sacrifices had to be made. So what we got was the espresso. The espresso was three cores at 1.24 gigahertz, based on a similar architecture to that of the 1997 Power Mac G3. Yeah, these slow cores are the Achilles heel of the Wii U. Both the 360 and the PS3 CPU outpower it by miles. This lack of CPU power pissed off developers and is possibly the sole reason the Wii U had such poor third-party support. Even in Nintendo's first-party titles, you can see the three cores really struggling when lots is going on.
So by now you're probably thinking, why didn't Nintendo just shove an x86 chip in the Wii? Well, for the past 16 years, Nintendo has been developing a good part of their games for power PC processors. Perhaps they were used to developing for the power architecture and didn't want to move away quite yet. But another reason might be so that the console could be completely backwards compatible with the highly successful Wii. But something you might not know is that the Wii U's Espresso chip is also capable of emulating the Gecko chip used in the GameCube. As for memory, there's 2GB of fairly slow DDR3 RAM, and the operating system usually takes half of that just to itself. To get around it though, Nintendo cheats a little. It's clear all the RAM is necessary in big games like Breath of the Wild, because if you press the home button to utilize the console's OS, you'll find that when you're done, the console has to load the game back into memory. But there is one chip that redeems the entire console. The Latte. By far the biggest chip on the SoC, it contains two major components. The GX1, solely there to provide backwards compatibility for the Wii, and then the GX2, an AMD Radeon GPU that Nintendo has never really said anything about, other than that it's a Radeon, so there are many beliefs about what it actually is. Some say it's based on a Radeon HD 2000, some say it's a 4670, and I've even heard some say it's as powerful as a 5670. But what we know for sure is that it runs at 550 MHz, and that it's responsible for the butter smooth HD graphics that the Wii U is known for. Oh, 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 
So how powerful is the Wii U? Well, it's hard to say. In the graphics department, it's miles ahead of the 360 and PS3, but it's held back by a CPU that is several generations behind everyone else. Perhaps if the CPU was stronger, the console would have gotten the third party support and could have truly competed with the big two. But it would have been a dramatically different machine to the one we have today. And we may have never seen games that were built for the Wii U's limitations like Captain Toad. Otherwise, the Wii U is a fantastic machine. It offers something that you truly can't find anywhere else. And even friends who own high powered gaming PCs are always seduced by the idea of some Mario Kart 8. And when they look at those stunning graphics and butter smooth frame rate and ask me, what's inside this thing? I turn and I say, a f***ing radeon. I'm Tim James. Thanks again for watching and good night.